Amazon Drone Delivery. Three major legal problems with Amazon Prime Air. I'm going to briefly discuss some of the background to this drone delivery buzz, why privacy won't be an issue, what really is going on, and then dive into the three major legal problems with Amazon Prime Air becoming a reality for Americans. Let's get started. Brief background on the drone delivery craze. Drone delivery has been all over the news, with Amazon being the first to announce the projected use of drones to make deliveries. Others have followed the trend and announced deliveries such as the drone burrito delivery, the drone pizza delivery, etc. In 2015, Dave Voss, the former head of Google's Project Wing, said to an audience, Our goal is to have commercial business up and running in 2017. FedEx, UPS, DHL, Walmart, and everyone including a grandmother's dog have announced they are interested in drone delivery. Then, as if we hadn't had enough drone delivery buzz, Amazon published on December 14, 2016, a video showing their first customer delivery using a drone. Drone delivery is really a small portion of the drone market, but thanks to Amazon, it is the face of the commercial drone industry. This has gone a long way to clean up a lot of the public stigma about the drone industry. On the topic of drones, people tend to think of Amazon uh, delivery, not predator drones. So kudos to you, Amazon, for changing that. The idea of drone deliveries in general is not only just delivering potato chips, but also for more legitimate humanitarian purposes. A great example of this is the company Matternet, which partnered with UNICEF to do drone delivery in Malawi with the end goal of developing low-cost delivery of blood samples from children to be tested so medical drugs can be given to them when needed and in time. Drones, they can save money, time, and lives. These drone delivery announcements have worked so well that when I tell people I'm a drone attorney, I almost always get asked about when drone delivery will become a possibility. My answer, not anytime soon. And it, it isn't because of one of the most frequently raised issues, privacy. It's frequently raised, but not a legal barrier. I don't think privacy issues are going to be a problem because of three reasons. One, in the terms of service that none of us will read, language will be used to the effect that says it's cool with the property owner to have the drone descend over the house and drop off the package. Two, Missy Cummings, a professor of mechanical engineering and director of the Humans and Autonomy Lab at Duke University, provided one potential solution of drone delivery companies and other companies partnering for delivery points. Perhaps Starbucks could be your intermediary point. Three, Amazon patent, Amazon's patent on drone docking stations attached to light poles or cell towers won't have property privacy issues because that will be taken care of in a contract agreement with the cell tower and power companies. But let's get back to Amazon. Is, Amazon. is Amazon's drone delivery really going to happen here in the U.S.? Most of the news is of operations either overseas or in rural areas. Most of what you've seen in the news is either in other countries or rural areas of the United States. Amazon was in England, DHL was at an island in Germany, Flirty flying in West Virginia, or Flirty in Hawthorne, Nevada, where they lowered the package outside a vacant residence in Hawthorne, Sci-Fi Works flying to the remote children's island off Massachusetts, Flirty doing a delivery from, boat, from a boat off of Cape May, New Jersey. Most of the operations were completed in rural or non-urban areas. Amazon's latest stunt was to a person who happened to be living next door, about 765 yards, next to their Cambridge, England facility. That's great if you live near a test site in another country, but what about us here in the United States? The drone deliveries overseas, we, they don't really matter to us because the laws are different here. Up until August the 29th, 2016, we only had the Section 333 exemption process, the Public Certificate of Waiver or Authorization, which is statutorily prohibits uh, commercial operations or the air within a certificate process coupled with a Certificate of Waiver Authorization. All three are difficult to operate under in reality, and only two of them allow commercial operations. Even though things have become 
better because we have part 107 and the new update to the section 333 exemption Areas of the law are still going to need to be changed before we see drone delivery at large scale. Three major legal problems with Amazon Prime Air becoming a reality for Americans. Problem one, FAA's Part 107 drone regulations. These are the newly created drone regulations that went into effect on August the 29th. Part 107 does not allow air carrier operations. Air carrier means a citizen of the United States undertaking by any means, directly or indirectly, to provide air transportation. Air transportation means foreign air transportation, interstate air transportation, or the transportation of mail by aircraft. In other words, FedEx, UPS, DHL, USPS, or anyone crossing state or national borders cannot operate under Part 107. Bummer. So Amazon, they can get around that by not carrying mail or crossing national or state borders. But here's where things start getting limiting for them under Part 107. The drone must be within line of sight of the pilot in command. The farther the drone can fly, the greater the economic impact. Well, now they've been limited to how far out they can fly by line of sight of the pilot in command. Another point is a Part 107 remote pilot is needed and that must be able to command the aircraft. Fully autonomous drones where no person in, is, is in command won't work. The remote pilot can only operate one drone at a time unless they have a Part 107 waiver. In other words, no swarms unless you have a waiver. This is an important point because as FlexPoint's article uh, rightly pointed out, that cost will be lowered when swarms are implemented. They said, it's not a stretch to think that a truck releasing a swarm of 25 delivery drones could be up to 25 times more efficient than a driver making the same drops. The drones cannot be operated from a moving vehicle to transport another person's property for compensation or hire. Well, you'll have to stop the delivery band. That's, that'll be the workaround. The drone cannot be operated over a non-participating person, or a moving vehicle. This is going to be hard to figure out because people and cars are constantly moving all over the place in residential areas and cities. If you want to fly at night, say 2 a.m. to get around the people problem, you'll need a Part 107 night waiver. Either way, you'll need a waiver. Lastly, the drones cannot be operated in Class B, C, D, or E at the surface airspace without an airspace authorization or waiver. And there's some other points that could be mentioned, but these were the big ones that popped out at me. And so just following up on the Class B, C, D, or E at the surface airspace requirement, well, where are the customers? Near cities. What is near cities? Airports. Everywhere. Let's pull some data from Arizona's Amazon Fulfillment Distribution Centers. Uh, I got this information off TaxJar's blog. There was five addresses, and really there was only four, there was four buildings is what the, the five addresses went to. I plugged those into a sectional chart and then specifically outlined the areas that the drones could not fly in unless they had an authorization or waiver. So the green arrow, the green arrows and stars are the locations. There's four of them here right here. And then there are the areas that the drones cannot fly. All these red areas here. See that? Two of the, the distribution centers are in controlled airspace. There's one right here that's actually located in Phoenix's Bravo airspace. And then there's one here that's located in, uh, I believe, that Phoenix Goodyear's Delta airspace. So two of these areas, you could not even take off the drone without having an authorization or waiver in place to allow that. So in short, under Part 107, Amazon has a whole host of regulatory problems they need to conquer just with the FAA to have cost-saving operations. But 107 isn't the only way to make a drone operation legal. There is also the Section 333 exemption process, which leads us into Problem 2, the FAA Section 333 exemption for commercial drone operations. Part 107 doesn't allow a beyond visual line of sight waiver for carrying other people's property. However, while Section 333 of the Modernization Reform Act of 2012 was only line of sight, the FAA reauthorization of 2016 has a provision which allows the FAA to grant 333s for beyond visual line of sight operations, BVLOS. This is an important 
point because the farther the drone can fly, the greater the potential economic impact. The reason why a drone delivery exemption won't be happening anytime soon is one, there is no 333 exemption for BVLOS already granted to date. Two, all the 333 exemptions granted to date require the drone to be flown by a pilot with a sport certificate or higher, and the drone must stay at least 500 feet away from all non-participating people and property. It's hard to do package delivery in an urban or residential environment when you need to stay at least 500 feet away from everything. A new 333 exemption will need to be crafted by Amazon if they go this route. This will take some time. The third problem. States, counties, cities, and towns all regulating drones. Death by a thousand paper cuts. I see the people who want drone delivery falling into three categories. One, those that value immediately possessing the item more than paying a high price. Two, those that don't have any other choice. There is no best, uh, best alternative, or the alternative is outside of their purchasing power. Or three, those that value the item now, but not more than a high price. Let's get into some, some background points here. Let's start discussing these three areas. Those that value immediately possessing the item more than paying a high price, early adopters. There are some areas that are not price sensitive, such as those that need delicate, limited, expensive, rare types of medicine immediately because the alternative is injury or death. Another, another example would be uh, critical pieces of an operation. For example, a large piece of machinery broke down and there are many people that the company is paying just sitting around waiting for replacement parts to arrive and be installed so that the operation can continue. How much is it per hour to have the machinery not running? Three, the rich guy down by the remote lake who wants an anniversary gift that he forgot to buy for his wife right now. Maybe that should be really in the category one. It's because it's kind of a life or death situation there. But, you know, drones, they, they do provide a great solution for the above categories because these people are interested more in decreased time than in decreased costs. The second category I see is those that do not have any other choice. There's no best alternative or it is outside of their purchasing power. In other situations, the drone might be the only feasible solution due to weather, disaster, lack of infrastructure. Think of hurricane relief for Alaskan bush pilots flying supplies into remote villages. If you are delivering to remote areas, you look at things differently. Flexport's article discussing Maternet's drone operation in Lesotho explained, as Repetopoulos of Maternet points out, Google and Amazon's plans ignore drones' best features. They can go where there are no roads. One billion people in the world today do not have access to all-season roads. Repetopoulos told a TED Talk, a TED audience in 2013, we cannot get medicine to them reliably, they cannot get critical supplies, and they cannot get their goods to market in order to create a sustainable income. For the Matternet team, the most interesting question was not the cost per delivery. They wanted to compare the cost of the drone network to the cost of building the roads Lesotho so badly lacks. These two above categories are elastic with price, but the third category will be affected by the states, counties, cities, or towns creating drone law. The first two categories might be the early adopters, but they will really be the small minority of drone deliveries. Most people are, are near the road where a delivery truck can get to them, and they most likely are not in a life or death situation. The third category of people, those that value the item not, I mean now, but not more than a high price. Amazon's business model is that the drones will provide a lower cost of delivery. Daryl Jenkins, who worked on the Economic Study Outlook for the Association of Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, said in his presentation, Amazon will be able to push the per unit cost of delivery to at least a dollar per package, causing all, sort, all the other competitors to either adopt or die. This is because of the economies of scale. But here is the problem. With a great with a greater number of drones and drones operating across the United States, more and more non-federal drone laws will need to be complied with. Most people have four layers of government applying to them. These governments might have created drone laws. For example, when I used to live on Palm Beach Island, I had four layers of drone laws that applied to me. 
the federal aviation regulations, the state of Florida's Freedom from Unwanted Surveillance Act, Palm Beach County's ordinance prohibiting model aircraft, uh, model airplane flights in county parks, and Palm Beach Island's drone ordinance. It isn't super hard to track the 50 states and the federal government, but we don't know everything going on with all the counties, cities, villages, boroughs. It's not a patchwork quilt of drone laws. It's worse. It's like a huge puzzle, and you have only a couple hundred pieces. So you have to go on a scavenger hunt to find the remaining pieces, but you don't really know if you need a thousand pieces or maybe a ten thousand pieces, and the number of pieces just keeps growing. Also, Local governments use all sorts of different terms to describe the same thing, such as unmanned aircraft, drone, model aircraft, model airplane. They like to pretend they are the FAA, with, which further increases the time it takes to search. These unknown areas are going to have to be checked into, which means there is a need for drone regulatory compliance department in Amazon, which means a lot of money. If the cost of compliance goes up, Amazon's business model starts to make less and less sense. Another aspect to these non-federal drone laws is that some of these laws are motivated not by the desire to decrease public risk, but to increase revenue. As a greater number of the non-federal regulators start catching on, Amazon and all the other companies interested in drone delivery start looking like revenue generators for local governments. Even if the local governments aren't greedy, their focus on safety and protecting their citizens generally results in some type of safety requirement that needs to be proven because... I mean, before they issue a permit license, uh, which will further drive up costs, uh, operating costs for the companies. We all understand that Amazon most likely won't save any money at first on drone delivery. But with more and more drone laws being created, lobbying, compliance, monitoring, insurance, permitting will all start to eat further into cost savings, which means cost savings won't be realized for years and years down the line. At a certain point, one or two guys operating out of a big delivery van starts to look like a good idea again. In short, drone delivery suffers death by a thousand regulatory paper cuts. In conclusion, many have written on this topic because they see the technology taken off, they see the progress in the technology that many have made, and assume that drone delivery will be allowed soon. They get the San Francisco mindset where they think if enough money, technology are thrown at the problem, it will be fixed regardless of the law. Additionally, most, written, uh, most writing on, uh, on or marketing drone delivery do not understand all the legal issues. Aviation is an East Coast industry where the laws out of D.C. will heavily influence the business. Aviation is an extremely regulated environment. The faster the, that companies operating in this area realize this, the better off they will be so that they can actually do these type of operations. Amazon Still has a long way to go before drone delivery can be experienced in real life by the American public, not just a short clip on the internet.